Another conflict of interest for special counsel Robert Mueller, this time with a Russian oligarch. Yeah, you heard me correctly. Robert Mueller has a conflict with a Russian oligarch, and not just any old Russian oligarch, one central to his investigation, one the left claims is, is ironclad, rock-solid, smoking gun proof that Donald Trump is a Russian agent. Now, this all goes back to uh, 2007, when Robert Levinson, former uh, operative of the U.S. government, was kidnapped in Iran. Levinson still hasn't turned up. Well, it turns out that Robert Mueller, this is a story from The Hill, repurposed by Newsmax, that uh, Oleg Deripaska is the guy's name. And he is part of this Mueller investigation. It's alleged that he's one of the people who uh, helped funnel money to Trump. Nothing's ever been proved. But, but it turns out that uh, Robert Mueller has problems that, according to The Hill, quote, even Mueller's form, former law enforcement comrades and independent ethicists acknowledge raises legitimate legal issues and a possible conflict of interest in his overseeing the Russian election probe. So, so Levinson is kidnapped in Iran in 2007. Well, it turns out that in 2009, and I'm going to read you again a, a, a direct quote from The Hill. It's from John Solomon, great uh, investigative reporter, if you don't know John's work. In 2009, when Mueller ran the FBI, the Bureau asked Russian oligarch Oleg Deripaska to spend millions of his own dollars funding an FBI supervised operation to rescue Levinson. Now, Levinson was a retired FBI agent who at the time, it's speculated, was working for CIA on contract, gathering information about Iran, probably their nuclear weapons ambitions and other things. And it goes on to say that Levinson was captured uh, in 2007 while working for the CIA. Now, Deripaska was sanctioned by the Trump administration. Okay, the Trump administration leveled sanctions on on Deripaska's businesses. Mueller, however, worked with Deripaska. And guess who the agent was who reached out to Deripaska back in 2009 to facilitate his relationship with the FBI? Andrew McCabe. I've told you how many times on this show. I've said it countless times. I've lost count. It all comes back to Andrew McCabe. Everything comes back to Andrew McCabe. He was fired, and I predict his future is looking pretty bleak. But this now, if I brought this story, the stories I bring you on this case every day, on the Mueller investigation, on this nonsensical investigation into Donald Trump, Russia collusion, if I brought you these stories, you would, and you were a Hollywood producer, you were the head of a studio in Hollywood, or you were the head of a a uh, television production company with a network deal, you would laugh in my face and you would say, the public has gotten so much smarter. There have been so many movies about espionage and intelligence and the FBI. No one is going to believe this. We've got to make something. You've got to bring us a script. You've got to bring us a concept, a treatment that's at least believable. No one's going to believe this. This is just too out there and insane, too conspiratorial. But it's all real. It's all real. Now, uh, let me read you some more of this. So <clears throat> they say FBI agents courted Deripaska in 2009 in a series. This is where the, the producers would tell me, oh, come on. Yeah, they, they, really? I, I mean, it reads like a, a, a spy novel from the 70s. The FBI agents courted Deripaska in 2009 in a series of secret hotel meetings in Paris, Vienna, Budapest, uh, and Washington, D.C. I mean, even the cities they pick, Paris. Vienna, Budapest, Washington, D.C. It reads like a John Le Carre or Tom Clancy novel. Agents persuaded the aluminum industry magnate to underwrite the mission. The Russian billionaire insisted the, inv uh, the operation neither involve nor harm his homeland, Russia. This is incredible. We knew, quote, we knew he, he was paying for his team helping us, and that probably ran into the millions, end quote. A U.S. official involved in the operation confirmed. One agent who helped court Deripaska was Andrew McCabe. This is uh, incredible. So let's think about this. Andrew McCabe, who previously convinced Oleg Deripaska to spend millions of dollars of his own money to help the FBI, 
While Robert Mueller was FBI director and approved the operation, then shows up, then shows up, uh, what was this, 2009, seven years, eight years later, into nine years later, as a central figure in the framing of Donald Trump and a frame job led by Andrew McCabe, who was fired for it. Anyway, they want to whitewash this. He was fired for trying to frame the sitting president. And the prosecution being overseen by Robert Mueller, the two guys who roped Deripaska in to looking for Levinson in 2009. Now, what did they have on Deripaska? And what leverage do they now have on Deripaska to create this phony illusion of collusion, right? The Trump administration sanctioned Deripaska. Comey, uh, uh, McCabe and Mueller worked with Deripaska. Who colluded with Russia? Was it Mueller's FBI? Is it Mueller's special counsel investigation? Or was it Donald Trump who sanctioned Deripaska? This is groundbreaking. Now, this all comes on the heels of new information that the second agent to uh, interview General Michael Flynn, now, there was a second agent who interviewed General Michael Flynn, and you, uh, you've never heard his name. And his name, I have a story up here from Sarah Carter. She's been doing excellent work. But that second agent's name is Joe Panetka, and he believed that uh, General Flynn told the truth. He did not believe General Flynn lied. He was the other agent in the room with Peter Stroke. You've never heard of Special Agent Joe Panetka. You've never heard of him. You've never heard of him. And the reason you've never heard of him, well, there could possibly be two reasons. I mean, I read this. I, I look at my screen and the information, uh, the data upon data upon data upon data. It's, it's really, really uh, just, it's, it's very um, disheartening for someone to see, someone who worked inside the criminal justice system. And uh, it was, uh, it, it, what I see here is, is terrible. So this agent, Joe Pietka, uh, he says him, I believe it's Pientka, not Panetka, Pientka. Well, he's been on ice. And the reason he's probably been on ice, one of two, in, in my professional opinion, I'm speculating here, but only one of two scenarios makes sense to me. One, that Mueller didn't want his name to come to light because he didn't want the judge Emmett Sullivan, who's known for banking down prosecutors when they withhold exculpatory evidence, which we now know they did, uh, to General Flynn's defense team. Had General Flynn's defense team had all the evidence we now have today, they never would have taken that plea. They wouldn't have had to. No jury in the world would have convicted. They never would have found 12 jurors to convict. It's doubtful that they'd ever have gotten an indictment if all of this information was publicly available and prosecutors were honest about it to the grand jury. I'm, I guarantee you they withheld this evidence from the grand jury. That's one scenario. Scenario number two can be that uh, Special Agent Pienko was and is cooperating with the Inspector General to try to uncover and bring to light the frame-up of General Flynn. It didn't, uh, it's, not a, it's not just coincidence that this guy went dark, okay? It's not just a, a coincidence that we didn't see any uh, information with his name on it uh, in, in the volumes we've seen. No, he's either a Mueller crony who's being kept under wraps to not blow their case, or he's working with OIG because he was disgusted at what he saw. But I'll tell you something. One thing is for sure. We needed to get to the bottom of this. And Mueller's investigation, if you don't want to shut it down politically, it is long past time with this new information on Deripaska. It is long past time for Jeff Sessions to stop the nonsense, unrecuse himself, step in, shut Mueller down, even if temporarily suspend the investigation until we can get to the bottom of these conflicts of interest and this gross impropriety. These are all very important stories and I want to bring them to you every single day. So help me do that by subscribing to our premium service at www.therebel.media forward slash shows. Also, go to the App Store, download the Rebel app, and go to firescottisrael.com. Sign our petition. Let's get this horrible Broward County Sheriff removed from office. As always, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you tomorrow.